Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So, Kylie's actually about to go take a nap, but I wanted her in the intro since we are back with another cake video and this one is for her birthday. Oh my God, I'm out of breath. <laughs> this girl just gets heavier and heavier by the day. Yeah, you're heavy girl. I can't be carrying you all day, every day. Yeah, you're getting very heavy. <laughs> but anyways, I am so excited because I have not baked in a while, at least not a cake this big. And again, it's for her birthday party. So yeah, I just wanted for her to say hello. Are you excited for your cake, mommy? Yeah. Hello? Anybody? So it's going to be a pretty lengthy video, I think, or at least a pretty big cake. Today's Friday, tomorrow is her party. So with that being said, she is due for a nap. So say bye everybody. See y'all tomorrow at my party. Okay, special guest, out of here please. <laughs> okay, so to get straight into the cake, like always I like to show you guys kind of what I have in mind uh, for the cake to look like at the end. And I always go on Pinterest, look up some inspo and then kind of just uh, tweak it and add my own uh, things to it. So this right here is basically my Pinterest inspo. I really wanted to do a vintage cake because I have never done a five tier or even a two tier vintage cake. And I feel like as she gets older, obviously she's gonna get to pick her own theme. And when the time comes, I would want to do more characteristic stuff as she wishes for me to do for her. So this cake is very much to please me and what I want to do for her that I have not done. And also realistically, I will probably never again do a five tier vintage cake and they're also very in right now. So I wanted to, to also incorporate obviously the strawberry theme hence why I'm going to add the strawberry on top and then strawberries around the cake and since the beginning I knew I wanted a big cake but I know it's going to be a lot <laughs> a lot of work and a lot of cake more than anything which I don't want for a uh, cake to go to waste so a very big thing that I told you guys about uh, before especially for wedding cakes they actually make the cakes fake cake dummies is what you call them which is styrofoam cakes for some of the tiers so I want to make her actual cake but I do not need to make a cake for five 500, 1,000 people. So the bottom two tiers are actually going to be cake dummies, aka fake cake. So it's going to be 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. And the 12 and the 14 are going to be cake dummies. So I have my 14 here. And then I have my 14 and my 12 here. And then the other three tiers are going to be real cake, which that alone is already going to uh, feed 200, 250. Anywhere from 200 to 300 people. I honestly forgot how to count slices, but I know that's more than enough for my guests since we're only expecting about um, 75 to 80 adults. So now to get into the cake. I did want to explain that because it's a really cool trick to know if you want to do something really big but you just don't want to have that much cake and also I am a one-man team when it comes to making the cake so I'm like do I want to really <laughs> bake so much cake and just be super exhausted at the end I rather save that energy um, into the decorating part which you guys know is my absolute favorite and kind of just cheat a little bit and not have to bake these two but at the end of the day still have a huge cake for my daughter yes yes we're gonna continue with the cake but before we do so don't tell me you have not been wanting to go see Drake or Beyonce, or Maluma. So I need to tell you about Sidkik. They have over 70,000 events from concerts, festivals, sports, and more. And they make grabbing tickets to any live event so easy. They basically put tickets from all over the web in one place for you guys to go in there and grab your tickets. They also rate the tickets for you from one to 10. We love a good rating skill. And every ticket is backed up with their buyer's guarantee. That means Sidkik is the only site that lets you return your tickets ahead of time with swaps. Girl Peso Plumas on tour, Beyonce, Forza Regida, Rebelde. I know you've been wanting to grab these tickets. Y'all know we came through for you guys, and with my code Less to Makeup, you guys get $20 off your tickets at SeatGeek. That's $20 off your first order with SeatGeek using my code Less to Makeup. So click on the link down below in the description and download the app. Thank you, SeatGeek, for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to my Betty Crocker mood. <laughs> So I bought this board. This is a 20 inch board. If you are from here, El Paso, I always buy my stuff at Candies, or I can put it down below uh, where I always get all of my cake stuff. A lot of the things I do order off Amazon, but for the most part, well, 50-50, I will go and buy stuff from my local cake store. So I have this glue right here so I can glue my first tier to the board. So let's go ahead and do that. So because the cake dummies are really light since they're made out of foam, uh, you do want to glue it down to your board so it does not slide or go anywhere and this glue is really strong it's actually meant for foam so it'll stick the foam right on my cake board and i'm going heavy on the glue because my whole cake depends on this if the bottom one slides off girl my whole cake slides off okay now that this is stuck on here 
I actually grabbed a weight just to make sure it sticks, sticks on there. And now to get into the whole stacking of my cakes, because this is going to be a very tall five tier cake, I'm actually going to support it with a wooden dowel in the middle, nice and secure. So I bought this actually, I will tag them right here from Cake Save, which is super, super cool. So basically this is for you to get the center right in the center and it comes from four to 14 inches. So I'm gonna put my six inch, six inch circle, mark where the exact center is. And now I know where to make my hole. I also loved that this was clear because I did find some DIY ones, but they were make they were made out of boards. So I liked how this one was clear because you can just obviously see through it. So I am prepping my six, eight, and ten inch boards. Now that I have my exact center, so now to carve the little hole. So now my boards are nice and ready. Honestly, I never really also did this because I always wondered like how do you get the center right on the center for all of them and like not stop the cake. But once I looked into it, I'm like, it's actually so much simpler than I thought. Well, so far, I haven't done it yet. But fun fact, it's actually my first time uh, using the support through a whole wooden dowel. What? Support? Wooden dowel <laughs> throughout the whole cake. But so far, that uh, tool made it so much more simpler. So now to get into frosting the cake. I am going to be doing this one with whipped cream, the whole entire cake, since I'm going to do a lot of piping and I personally just love whipped cream more. I rarely use it because normally with big cakes I use a lot of fondant or a lot of sturdiness if that makes sense. So I just feel safer with buttercream which is also yummy. But if I can, which this time I can, I will be using, I will use whipped cream which again I also buy it in my local uh, cake store which is called Candice. So I'm just going to whip this up and I'm going to just frost all of my tears since I want for them all to be the same pink and then we'll go on to step two so basically for the next hour or two I'm just going to be frosting my cakes to frost my cakes especially big ones I actually love this technique putting the, putting the frosting into the packing bag this one is a Wilton 789 tip I feel like it just makes it easier and faster and an even layer So I tend to not show much of me frosting my cakes because you guys have seen me do this many, many times unless I have like a new little uh, something I want to say. So these right here, life changers when it comes to smoothing the top of my cakes. Uh, for the longest times, I would just go in with like my flat spatula over and over and you see how you, it creates like the little lines. And I would just leave them, but not with this one because obviously it's like flexible. It kind of just like smooths them out, smooths them <laughs> out perfectly. So if you don't have these, I get these from Amazon. Highly, highly recommend for like a super smooth top. Both of my tiers are frosted. Now to stack these two. Again, the bottom two, uh, which are these two, are the cake dummy ones. So I'm going to stack them together already. And this should go right through the foam since I pre stacked the foam. That way the hole is already there. So I'll just put the measure on top again and then stack where the little hole is. Stack my. I need to stop saying stack. <laughs> my wooden dowel down. Oh, that literally went right through. And now to stack my other one. So the hole is already there, and then I'm just going to put it through my cake. Because you can't push it down. <laughs> Why don't you push it like with a spatula? Or I, I can just push it from the top, because obviously the other cake's gonna go on top. Okay, now I'm low-key regretting never doing this because with the hole, everything is perfectly centered. And if you watch my cake videos, I'm always like trying to aim it right in the middle. And with this, it's like guaranteed that all of my cakes will be right in the middle. <gasps> wow, that was really woke. So this is done. Also, the what I love the most about the cake dummy, especially for the bottom of tiers, is how light the cake is. Now to frost the actual three cakes, which you guys have seen me do many, many times. So I'm just going to frost them and then uh, bring you guys to stack them.
done frosting my cakes, uh, my two cake dummies, and then also my three real cakes. And now I was literally debating forever if to pipe it now or pipe it at my sister's house. But I feel like I should do it now and whatever I can do over there, just do it over there. Fun fact, uh, her party is going to be at my sister's house. So back to it being a vintage cake. I did this cake for my friend Chanel, which I also recorded on my TikTok. And then also for Kaeli's first uh, birthday shoot. And I thought I could just free style it, free hand yeah. free hand like the curtains. Girl, <laughs> it was so much harder than I thought. So this time I'm like, I need to do some kind of template for me to be able to do that. And I actually went on Amazon and looked for like, I typed in curtain templates or vintage templates and I could not find anything. So I was just brainstorming that way I already have like the curve. If you guys know any tips or tricks, let me know. But what I did was back to this clear board. It actually has these dividers if you guys can see them. So I used these to kind of place my toothpicks. That way they are all evenly, evenly spaced and kind of like did a dot in between. So the camera doesn't catch it too much, but with the toothpick, I kind of already did the curtains. That way when I pipe it, I know exactly where to pipe it. And I have my B-roll camera on this side to show you guys like a close up, but I did want to go in depth about that a little bit, like I just did, because that's something that I'm like, how do I do it? So I kind of just figured it out to do it like that. And I feel so much more confident that everything's going to be aligned and because it is my baby girl's first birthday cake i'm trying to make it as precise and perfect as possible because her mash cake i freehanded it and i was like it's fine she's about to smash it so with all that being said i'm going to get into piping Okay guys, I'm trying to set up the bureau for you guys. When it comes to these big cakes, I kind of just get in my zone and start doing my thing. So it's a little hard for me to bring you guys along. But here we go. I have put this pipe. This one is the Wilton 113. And wish me the most luck ever because I'm telling you guys, I have not uh, piped in so long. Cute. Okay, I I'm feeling the vibes now. this the past two vintage cakes that i did was the fact that i freestyled it thinking i was i don't know who and right now i'm like following the tracer is so easy okay let's get it Okay, if you caught since the beginning of the video that my earrings are not matching, take a shot. But, girl, I had two completely different earrings, so let's get that situated. Oh, that means I have to wash my hands now. Now to wash and disinfect my hands. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and actually stack. I was debating if to stack it now or not, but just so I can start seeing the vision more, I am going to stack our first real cake of the night. This one right here, and then the last two tiers. I'll go ahead and do those at my sister's, but just so I can start seeing the vibes more. Hold up, I am also <laughs> recording this for TikTok. Honestly guys, I mean, I don't know, let me do it and then I can give my review. As I said, I have never stacked cakes with towels. Okay, I will say, wow, I can believe 15 years of me making cakes and it's the first time I used the whole double thing. It was really nice to know that I for sure had it exactly in the center. Just at the bottom, I always get kind of scared to let it go. 
But wow, I highly think I will now start doing that. Like that peace of mind knowing it's in the center and I don't have to like be moving it around. Okay, not to pipe, keep piping borders on this. Um, and yeah, this cake, obviously vintage cakes, is just a lot of piping. So yeah, this is coming to life. Down to the last two tiers. So this one, I'm gonna put the six inch on top. This one is eight. I decided to put her name in the strawberry. So that's the update on that. And yeah, we're almost done piping the cake. It is sun hour, so the sun's about to hit in my face, but done with the last and fifth tier. And now to finish off the strawberry, that way tomorrow it's like ready for me to just top on top of the cake. So I will share B-roll of how I did this yesterday. So for my strawberry, this is a four inch cylinder and I just carved it out with my knife under the water. That way you don't have a mess everywhere. Until uh, I got it to the strawberry shape that I wanted and I rolled out some red fondant. And to make the fondant stick to my styrofoam, I used this piping gel that I got off Hobby Lobby and basically just played with my fondant to go on my strawberry. I accidentally glued it from the top to the bottom at first and that was not working out, girl. So. I went ahead and took it off and re-rolled it, put it back on, and this time I did it from de arriba para abajo, and it was so much simpler. It was actually still a little bit tougher than I thought, but I made it work and basically just played with the fondant till it was smooth enough for it to look not so much of a wonky strawberry. I think the main thing was just getting it to the shape of a strawberry, and you guys know strawberries do have kind of like a little bit of texture, so... I then used this little fondant tool to indent all of the seeds in my strawberry and give it more of a strawberry look. Now for the top, I was debating what to do and I used this Christmas tree cookie cutter and it actually worked to kind of get the leaves of the strawberry and I just played with it, piled them on top of each other, rolled them out and with this fondant tool kind of just gave it the look of a stem. And yeah, the moment of truth, I put it on top to see if it looked like the top of a strawberry and I actually really liked it. Now I just let it dry overnight with paper towels and that's how you get a strawberry. I'm glad I got this done yesterday. That way today the foam is not like super soft or anything and I'm able to handle it a little bit better. And then as you guys saw, I let this dry overnight. And these pumpkins are actually part of my home decor currently. So it came through because it had like the shape that I wanted for it to hold the shape to go on top of the strawberry. So I could have just laid a flat top, but I really wanted to let it dry like this with napkins on its own. That way it could have a little bit of dimension. That looks so cute. Okay, you guys are hella washing out with the sun. So yeah, this is basically the strawberry. I'm just gonna add the little stem on top. Mama girl, y'all can hear Kylie in the back. And here we have the strawberry. Also, um, for cakes, especially for my kids, I really, really want for all of their cakes to have their name. So I was trying to think where else I could put her name. And I decided to write it on the strawberry very little right here, just because that's something that I always want to do for their cake. So uh, I'm basically going to just roll out some white fondant. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it for today. And I'll see you guys in the morning to actually set up the cake and make it come to life. The next day. Okay, we're up, we're loaded, heading to my sister's house. Wish us luck because it's a pretty lengthy drive, so here we go. We made it and the cake is safe and sound. I'm going to stack it here. The party is literally a couple of feet away. Leave it completely ready for them to just transfer it to where the cake is supposed to be. I need a ladder. Oh, my least favorite part of cake decorating. But now, again, with the center that will be right there, it is perfectly gonna be in the center. <gasps> yes, to finish it off with my favorite tier of the cake, this little eeny meeny mm. with <laughs> Gaeli's name. Guys, I forgot I taped the board. So when I was frosting the cake, the board wouldn't move. And I don't think I would ever do that again because right now I'm taping it. It's not a good idea. So remind me to not do that again, but to always use a dowel again. <laughs> okay. No, who did that? Okay. Now, I also brought my mixer, some whipped cream, and this is all I brought for my house to finish off the cake here. Obviously, like the piping around to cover the board.
and I am officially done with the cake. Um, oh no, I'm lying, I'm lying. How could I forget? I have these strawberries, so I contemplated, not gonna lie, for a while to do them out of fondant or buy them like this, but I'm going to blame my busy schedule. And I was like, you know what? Let me just another little shortcut and not make these completely out of hand because I would have added a good other six <laughs> hours of work. So I feel like these look cute. They'll get the job done just to like completely tie in the whole theme of the strawberries. So I'm just going to place these around and then we'll for real be done for the grand finale. Who will make it to chapter 10? Me. I mean, who will make it <laughs> to season two? Ta-da! Okay, that's what I was missing, guys. I was like, it's missing something. I can't believe I almost forgot the strawberries, but that definitely brought it to life. And I might be being a little biased because it's for my daughter, but this definitely has to be in my top three cakes that I've ever made. And yeah, I can't wait for her to look back at this video. And let me know down below what you guys think. But now I'm gonna start on the second vlog for you guys to join us on that one. Bring you guys along to the party. So that's pretty much it for this video. I will now insert clips of what the cake looks like with its backdrop, because this backdrop is not <laughs> where it's supposed to be. So, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you on on her birthday vlog coming next. Bye!